This podcast is a quest for well-being, a quest for a meaningful life through the exploration of fundamental truths, enlightening ideas, insights on physical, mental, and spiritual health. The inspiration is love. The aspiration is to awaken new ways of thinking that can lead us to a new way of being. Being well. Welcome to Body, Mind, and Soul Healing Conversations. <laughs> COVID-19 has changed the world. Millions of Americans' lives will never be the same. In this time of transition, we need role models who can help us navigate our new future. Change is scary. Facing our fears, worries, and anxieties, facing ourselves, is scary, says Jordan Pollack, co-founder of Ziggy's Naturals. A transgender male He knows all about personal transformation. But that's what's necessary at times like these. By journeying into the self, you will find wonders. And when you accept the reality of who you truly are, that's when thriving begins. Valeria Telles interviews Jordan Pollack, the co-founder of Ziggy's Naturals and Speaker. Jordan Pollack is co-founder of Ziggy's Naturals. He started the business with his father, Mark, in 2018 due to his personal experience with the benefits of CBD. As a transgender male, he is keenly aware how much these products help people who identify as LGBTQIA+. A former chef by trade, he loves working out, hiking, snowboarding, and hanging out with his wife, Ziggy, and their furry children, Pika, Ozzy, and Harlow. Meet Jordan at ziggiesnaturals.com. Here is the interview with Jordan Pollack. In your own words, who is Jordan Pollack? That, that's a that's what could be a long question. Right? Yes, right, right. Um, <laughs> I guess Jordan Pollock is someone who has gone through um, a lot of different changes in life, and I think I'm still discovering who Jordan Pollock is. You know, I've been reading a lot recently, just how, like, you know, the more we kind of dig deeper into ourselves, we learn more about ourselves. Sure. And so I feel like just over time, I've discovered more about who I am within myself and what that stands for. And I believe I am a, I don't know, I'm a loving, open, outgoing person. Um, I love being around family. Um, and when I say family, that can be, you know, chosen family yeah. as well. Just people that, you know, love you and you love them. And right. um, that's what makes me the happiest. I wonder if we can agree that we are unconditional love. <laughs> That's what I put out there most of the time. What would you say about that? If I say that to you, we are unconditional life, unconditional love. I would say I, I wish that everyone felt that and, you know, saw that, you know, because I think if everyone could feel those things and saw that, I think the world would be a much happier place if everyone could feel that love and just you know, know that, right. you know, love is, it's such a simple like word when you think about it. Yeah. Um, but the concept of it is really just, you know, do onto others as you'd want them to do onto yourselves. Mm. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that's kind of like the big concept of it. And I feel like if we all could be that, it would definitely be a better place. <laughs> oh, tell me about it. <laughs> it would be a much peaceful, loving reality for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have any spiritual practices or beliefs? So I am a transgender male and I started taking hormones when I turned 25. So yeah. I was already kind of grown into myself, you know, before I kind of realized that, wow, like this is the step I need to take to 
find my true self more. Right. And right. I feel like for me, it's just always helped to, I guess I like to do journaling, you know, and, yeah. or for me, like, I also like taking photos sometimes, like mm. randomly I'll be certain places and I'll just see like a building or something. And yeah. I like to take a photo of it and then kind of write a little, not like a poem, but almost a little mm. like excerpt of like kind of what I'm feeling in that moment. Yeah. And like, I feel like that's always helped me. Like it's my form of somewhat meditation in a way right. um, to kind of like take myself out of the moment for a second and be like in that moment. So that's always like helped me a lot. Recently, I've been doing a lot of breath work as well, which mm, I've yeah. been enjoying. When we think about spirituality and all these teachings, I see that um, being in the moment, it's something that spiritual teachers talk a lot about. To me, like even more than that is becoming the moment being the moment, which is embracing everything as it is, what the this is, the body is, and everything else around us being, yeah, feeling so comfortable, feeling at home anywhere. That to me is really the core of what spirituality is. So thank you for saying that too, about the moment, taking pictures yeah. and being, yeah, being there. So what is another word for transformation? I guess change, yeah. uh, growth. I feel like there could be a lot of words for that right. if you think about it. You know, like now that you say that, that's like puts it into a bigger concept because, you know, transformation can really mean a lot of different things within, you know, somebody's own self, like what they're going through. Another question I have for you is from a mental and emotional perspective, what are some of the signs that we have been transformed? What would you say? Um, so I guess personally for me, um, I know my, my confidence, uh, the way I, I even just look at my own self in the mirror or the way I carry myself around other people, yeah. um, I think has changed and just shown my growth and that like my transformation as a human has grown over time and become stronger, yeah. um, with the bond, like within my own self. I wonder if it always takes suffering to be transformed, to get to this point of confidence, true confidence. Would you say that always takes suffering and challenges or this is something that we can learn from one another? Um, I mean, I guess I could say both ways. I, I don't think it always has to take suffering, yeah. but I do think that sometimes not necessarily suffering, but fear mm, yeah. um, and putting ourselves in situations that this is something else I've read recently, just like putting ourselves in situations that are fearful to us yeah. um, or we fear can sometimes transform us to grow in that you know, situation or realize what we were fearing um, wasn't something we should be fearful for. And that also gives us confidence within ourselves when we're able to overcome that. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't think it necessarily has to come from it, from like the suffer or the fear, but I do think Sometimes in those moments, it shows us as humans that, you know, we're more powerful than we think. Mm, so true. And, you know, yeah. and so maybe even after those moments, you can realize these things without going through that suffer or maybe just doing more research about yourself and how you can study your own self and grow could help as well without having to go through that suffer for change, you know, just try and find it within yourself. You're saying that fear doesn't have to become suffering. Yeah, yeah. You know, I guess you could look at it that way. Like, yeah. you know, you don't have to look at it as like you're suffering, right? Because yeah. for me, like, you know, before I transitioned, like I definitely wasn't as happy yeah. um, with who I was, just gotcha. like my outside and what I felt. And I knew something was wrong, but I don't necessarily think I suffered. Yeah. I, I just think that... Like I definitely went through hard times and sometimes were scary, um, but I don't think I necessarily suffered. And maybe it's because I took that step when I knew I needed to, to change myself. Do you see suffering and pain being the same thing or somehow different? I mean, I think they could maybe go hand in hand, but I also think they probably could be, be different as well. You know, we could... Uh, that's hard too. Those are very deep, you know, both deep things that you could experience as one and the same or 
totally different depending on what the circumstance is and the person, you know, like we all go through different life experiences and that can cause us to feel certain things that we may think are suffering when, you know, really we just feel the pain or I don't know, you know. I have some more of these warm up questions for you, Jordan. The next one is about the purpose of the human experience. What do you think that is? Why are we here? Uh, I mean, I think to make like connections, you know, like humans are so powerful and we have so much to offer that I I don't even think we realize. And like the connections that we can make with other humans, I think can make a huge difference in just your own life and impact someone else's life. And that can help a lot of different things in this world. Mm -hmm. So I just think that for the human connection, you know, and to be out there and to be able to connect with other people is just so important. And I think has helped me just become, you know, a better person in general and just learning from everyone around me. And another question I have is about true power. How do you define that these days? I feel like, I guess it could be two different things. So I could say true power, like within myself is just being able to like love myself to a whole and that would get make me feel the most powerful within myself. Whereas like feeling powerful to the world for me would be you know, having those connections and just being able to, you know, know people from all over the place and have connections here and there. And I feel like to me that makes me feel very powerful as well. Um, mm-hmm. So those two things, I guess I would say. Do you believe in the uh, realization of unconditional self-love? Yeah, I mean, I definitely think that, I mean, it's helped me, I will say. (laughs) So, you know, and I try and preach that onto, like, that's what I put out there to a lot of people that follow me on social media is, you know, like, you may be having those hard times, but like, if you can try to love yourself and do things that make you love yourself and make you happy. That's what's going to make you flourish. And, you know, it'll make you and your partner's life better. It'll make your life better. It'll make you and your friend's life better. Just, you know, if you have that unconditional love for yourself, everybody around you, it's just going to make it all better. What do you love most about being in a human body? Getting able, uh, being able to, okay, so I'm really into fitness. So I guess this is a cool question actually, because and just being able to transition, right? So right. the human body is so, it's almost like magical, yeah, right? Like it's right. so powerful yeah. what we can do to transform our ourselves. True. You know, like if you're like, oh, I want to be fit. Like you can work really, 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 really hard mm-hmm. and go to the gym and eat the right foods. And, mm-hmm. you know, you can transform your body to almost look, you know, Completely some different. way, yeah. some way how you may want it. And yeah. True. Like to me, that's just so amazing how we can really do that for ourselves. So I guess that's what it is, like how we can really just transform our human bodies and how powerful they are. The question is, why do we fear so much to, to get to know who we are and get intimate with our own selves? I see that around me a lot. I think, and this is, you know, just for me, I guess, because everyone's going to have a totally different feeling. But I feel like for me, at least, a lot of it has to do with, you know, society and the pressures that we get pushed on us since we're little kids and without even really realizing what they are, you know. So, like, for instance, you know, you watch TV shows, right? And most couples are straight couples, a man and a female. And that's just how it is. And they have a kid and the man goes to work and you know, we see this like on and on and on all the time and it's just being played in front of us. And so like when we feel any sort of way different from that, it's, you know, we are like scared because we're almost like ingrained in us that this is how it's supposed to be. And so like when you feel deferred from what you've been almost like seen and showed everywhere, what it's supposed to be like, it's, it's scary. And I think that's what causes all this fear in at least my community, like just the, you know, the LGBTQ plus community in general, um, this whole fear of not fitting into society and what we were supposed to be like. And so I think like, I do see now more and more 
things coming out that are more educational or you do see like a TV show with, you know, not a straight couple. And so I think there is more of that out there now, which allows, you know, my community not to be as fearful when they want to tell their parents that they like the same, you know, the same gender or same sex or I guess that's kind of that's kind of the answer there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, you did yeah. very much. So yeah. society with all these standards yeah, that is pushed, it's a kind of programming really right, for the brain, for the mind and then our own family members, which um, happens a lot, too. But I love the way you talked earlier that we talked about fear not becoming necessarily suffering. So once we educate ourselves, so we empower ourselves from within, then it's much easier to navigate those assumptions and impositions from society. And you're saying it's getting better, right, Jordan, at this time? I hope so. And talk to me for a moment about the challenges the, or the biggest challenges that you have faced during the process of self-acceptance and healing. For me, it was you know, what a lot of people like to call dysphoria. Um, yeah. I don't necessarily know if that's exactly what it was, but just for me, you know, and I'm sure a lot of people that went through or go through like a transition in their life, that's so big where you're, you know, looking like a female and now people, you know, you're representing as male. And so at first it was really hard because, you know, I would go into, I worked in sales and had to go into a meeting with, a bunch of grown men and I was representing as male, but looked more female and, you know, dressed male. And those were definitely like really hard times, yeah. but like I did it. And I think going through those fearful times and like pushing through like my fear led me to be that stronger person, mm -hmm. led me yeah. to realize like, this is what I needed to do for myself. And that's what mattered because like, you know, we're all living like technically our own journey. Like, you know, we all have this life to live. Like we need to do what's going to make us the happiest. So that's the main reason I basically was like, this is what I need to do to fulfill the rest of my life. Like to make sure that the rest of my life I can live to, for my true self. Yeah. And that's, you know, that's why I started taking hormones and did what I did. And who was your greatest supporter? Who would you say was always there for you? I'm truly, I'm very blessed. Uh, you know, I, I have a lot of support. Luckily, I know a lot of people don't, but so I mean, my greatest supporter, like, I don't, it's hard to say like one specific person because I really do. Like, I'm very blessed to have like my, both my parents support me, my grandparents on both sides, you know, my aunts and uncles and cousins. And I have not had like one family member not support me. And so it was just, you know, the feeling of that is just truly amazing. Um, and I think that's helped me as well. Just knowing that I have, you know, these people that will always love and support me no matter what, I think really helped. So, you know, I wish a lot more people had that because that would help them just in return. So. Oh, yeah. Incredibly. That's beautiful, Jordan. Um, unconditional love. Yeah. You're surrounded by it. <laughs> yeah. That, and that's, you know, that's what my dad says. He always, my dad will always preach. He's like, when anybody comes to him and, you know, because he's had a lot of parents reach out to him that have children um, that are maybe going through some things. And he's like, all that matters is you love your child, right. you know? And he was like, just love your child unconditionally. Right. And that's all that matters no matter what. And he was like, and that's just what I, I do. He was like, I just love my child. And you know, this is where it's gotten us. So I think now is the moment to talk about, or the perfect moment to talk about these um, transition CBD is one of them. Uh, you have a company, you're the co-founder of Ziggy's Naturals. Is that how to, you pronounce it? Yeah, so, so it's Ziggy's Naturals and Ziggy is actually my wife's name. So we named the company after her. We, we, we just really like her name and that's why we named it after her. <laughs> <laughs> it is cute. <laughs> yeah, so talk to me about the inspiration and the intention of creating this company. Uh, I mean, I've always been an advocate for cannabis. I've worked in the industry for the past, like almost six years now. Yeah. And I've just, it's just always helped me with my anxiety and just getting through some hard times. So I've always been an advocate for it. And my dad 
has always been, you know, he's an entrepreneur and uh, he's a sports agent and represents professional athletes and owns his own business and kind of always was pushing on my brother and I like, all right, like if you guys want to start a business, like start talking to me about it. So <laughs> I, I kind of was like, well, like I want to start a cannabis business. And um, we, my dad used CBD and he really liked the product and how it worked. It helped his um, tendonitis in his elbow a lot. Uh, so he was a big fan of CBD products already. And we kind of had a family friend who owned some farms in Colorado and basically went from there and started our CBD, a line of CBD products. And it was great just because I wanted to start a company where I knew I was selling products that could help people. Yeah. You know, I, I worked in sales for a while and I was selling software that didn't help people. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> uh, and, it, yeah. you know, and I'm very like, <laughs> I like to put out there like love and yeah. I want to help others. So right. it didn't fit suit me what I was doing. And I knew that I wanted to sell something or give something to people that would actually benefit them. Yeah. And so CBD, I thought was perfect. And a lot of people in my community uh, struggle with anxiety yeah. just you know in their daily lives because of the situations they're in yeah and so we kind of decided like look we know this community like can use these products and we know a lot of people in this community don't feel like they have companies that support them right uh so we're like let's you know completely like look make our brand like lgbtq friendly with the pride logo mm -hmm. and you know, create like a safe place, a family, um, not just a CBD company, but, you know, like a whole soul behind it yeah. um, to give everyone. And that's kind of what led us to where we are now. And, you know, we work with a lot of partners that are also in the community and it's just been great. <laughs> yeah. How lovely. I love this idea yeah. of helping others to heal, basically. So how does it work, Jordan? CBD, I have never taken, but I'm, I'm interested now. I've been talking to uh, quite some people about it and I'm becoming more interested. For myself and my husband, I think he needs more than I do, <laughs> but maybe both of us need, need that. So talk to me how it works, the benefits, and can anyone use it? So, yeah. Okay. So what most people don't know is that we're all made up. We all have an endocannabinoid system. So everybody does every human, right. And even dogs do as well, like pets. Um, and basically it's a biological system, um, that's composed of endocannabinoids, which have receptors, which are called the CB1 and CB2 receptors, um, for cannabinoids. Um, and cannabinoids are like THCA, THC, Delta-8, Delta-9, CBD, CBDN, CBDG. Like there's so many different cannabinoids that they're still like kind of discovering yeah. um, that help with a bunch of different stuff. So what it does is it like basically like kind of like it works with your central nervous system, yeah. uh, which helps can like reduce anxiety. It can reduce inflammation. Um, it can help with sleep. Uh, it can help your like lungs, your liver, your spleen, your muscles, um, aches and pains in your bones. Um, there's so many different things that they're finding out now that CBD can help with. But the problem is it's still not like FDA approved. Um, so we can't necessarily say like it will help do this or it will cure, you know, this. Um, we have to be very careful with the wording we use around the stuff just because, like I said, it's not FDA approved yet. Um, that's why, like, we hope, you know, we're a company that does everything the right way. We go through third party lab testing where our facilities are GMP certified, which means that, like, the facilities are so clean. You can basically like eat off the floor. Oh, nice. <laughs> um, <laughs> that sounds so, like, good. You know, we make everything <laughs> super high quality. And yeah. so we want it to be FDA approved. So that way you know, there can be tests like done about all these different cannabinoids and we can really like sell and be like, this specifically will help with this. And yeah. this specifically will help with this. Whereas now it's just, you take CBD and it really does help with a wide range of things. You know, wow. like I said, my dad uses it for his tendonitis in my elbow. Yeah. I use it to help me sleep at night. I've used it on my scars. Uh, like there's, you can use it um, for acne. It helps like with acne. Uh, there's just so many different things that CBD can help with and it's just very beneficial to us as humans um, because we have this system with receptors made for it. 
Right. So it's so, natural. So, it, yeah, exactly. It, it's all natural products. You know, it's not like you're taking an Advil and like there's something in that Advil that's supposed to do this to you. It's like you're putting something in your body that has a receptor already in your body for it. And it's like go, attaching to that and like working its magic. I love to try it though. And I will. I'm going to get some from your yeah, website and try it. I, uh, we could definitely send you some products to try out. Oh, that would be wonderful. Thank yeah. you, Jordan. I really want to try it, my husband too and see how we feel. And they all let you know. I can even yeah. write a blog review about it. Yeah, for sure. I want more people to know about it. Does it have any side effects from your perspective? Have you felt anything? Um, not really. I, I mean, I haven't felt anything. Uh, we haven't really. So with CBD, you can't really, what they say too, is you can't really take too much. Like if you do, you actually just, it will come out through urination. Yeah. Just waste. Yeah. So, I mean, side effects, what I would say is like, you know, some people, for instance, may want a higher dosage because something's not helping or maybe the high doses is too much. And like, instead of helping you go to sleep, it's keeping you awake, but there's no necessarily like side effects that are bad that people have said, or that there's been talked about, um, about CBD. Okay. So that's great to know. It's safe it, because it's natural. It's like vitamin C in a way too much. is actually just a waste, but it doesn't do anything. So, here, so, so I just looked it up just like so I just looked it up and it says that um, some side effects that CBD can cause is dry mouth and reduced appetite. So it's, it just, I guess it depends like how much you're taking or, you know, so those were the two that I just saw on Google. <laughs> Thank you so much for the intention, this beautiful intention you have to help others to heal because this is what this I am all about in this podcast, what I do is all about healing. Thank you, Jordan, for your contribution. Success. How do you view success these days? What is to be successful from your perspective? To be successful is to wake up and be happy, I guess, about where you're at. Um, you know, because success can be measured in a lot of ways, as you're saying. Like, you know, it could be whether you have a lot of money in this big house or you know, you have your family, I guess. So to me, it's, I think success is measured with happiness. You know, if, mm -hmm. if you're truly happy um, with where you are, then I think you should feel like, you know, you're successful because that's really what matters is, you know, your happiness in this lifetime. So my last question is, what are three things about life that you know for sure as of this moment? I mean, I know that I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be within myself. Yeah. I know that I have a beautiful wife and, um, you know, hopefully our marriage will keep flourishing. And I know that, I mean, I guess I'll say that I have faith that, you know, my community will hopefully see just more and more representation for them, you know, out in the open and it will keep, you know, just them basically, my community more out there and, just more accepted. So before we say goodbye, where can we find more information about you, your products, services, and future projects? Um, so if you want to check me out, you can look me up on Instagram. My Instagram is at Jojo Pollock, or you can check us out at ziggiesnaturals.com and it's Z-I-G-G-Y-S naturals.com. Wonderful. I'll have the link on your podcast profile too. Thank you so much again and we'll talk soon. Yes, thank you so much. Um, bye for now, John. Thank you for listening. To learn more about Jordan Pollock and his work, please visit ziggiesnaturals.com. more about this podcast, please visit fitforjoy.org slash podcast. Thank you again for listening and bye for now.